Okay. There's some questions about my bounce that a lot of people don't really understand. It's some it's some people that don't understand the concept of the mechanics behind my jumping ability. Uh what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is I am a primary one foot jumper. Okay. However, I'm a speed jumper and I'm not six feet. I'm five eight. So I need more speed than someone that is six three or six seven or whatever the case may be. With that being said, uh, it's harder for me to jump on surfaces like tile or damaged surfaces because that traction is what I need to elevate my game. However, that does not mean I don't have the strength to elevate in the air. However, you got to think about it like this. I'm explaining to you why these shoes are so important to my career. You can take this or you can leave it, but it's the truth. I guarantee you what uh, it's the truth. When I'm sprinting, traction is needed for a certain amount of speed before I press down on the ground with my feet to explode in the air. Depending on which surface I'm jumping on, due to the fact that I am a speed jumper and I target certain muscles that power jumpers don't target as much, my energy comes from speed and traction is a key element to speed, which translates into the momentum you need to dunk. So that is what I'm trying to explain to people when I say shoes matter. When I explain this concept to a power jumper who normally comes off an angle off two feet, does a long angled penultimate step. When I say this, they're looking at it like, oh, I I rely on it's mostly power. It's just core or whatever muscles that they rely on to elevate their game. Most of these guys are around 160, 170 pounds. That's how they elevate. Because of their body mass, they they rely on certain muscles that I don't rely on. I weigh about, if I'm correct, 128. So because I'm short, uh, 5'8", and I'm, I weigh less, I am a speed jumper. Hip flexes, you understand what I'm saying? So with that concept being explained, I'm going to show you what shoes I'm going to be wearing on asphalt surfaces. This is the Jordan 13. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. You might be thinking to yourself, why would he choose the Jordan 13s? They're pretty heavy. Um, If you look at the sole of this shoe, this is a, this is a very strong herringbone pattern. When I plant my feet and I sprint off two feet and I plant, I won't be sliding as much in these as I would uh, a different model shoe. So this is why the Jordan 13 would do good on asphalt because the herringbone traction pattern, because of its how, how tough it is, it would grip slick asphalt surfaces. Asphalt can be very damaged. It can be sandy. This traction pattern does an amazing job. It is a little too heavy to be jumping off one foot in. However, I can jump off one foot in in, in this shoe, but I would prefer jumping off two feet. This is why this shoe is so important because when I plant, I don't want to slide all over the floor and have my speed be used against me. Hopefully, you guys can understand that now second shoe i was going to use the kobe 9 but 
Now, I'm not going to be using these because these are beat. But uh, the Jordan 7, if you look right here at the toe area, this circular traction pattern at the toe area allows me to grip the floor with my toes. And this shoe isn't as flat as previous model Jordans. Jordan 1s are flat at the bottom. 2s are flat at the bottom. 3s are flat. 4s are flat. 5s and 6s are flat. Now, these are kind of flat, but they have an arch at the toe area that allows me to sprint forward. And because this part of the shoe grips the floor so well, I'm able to sprint and not slide on certain surfaces. Now, I've tried it on some slippery wood. I didn't have any slippage at all, depending on how I moved my feet. So with that being explained, with me being athletic and wing one around 128 that explains how i was able to elevate my bounce